All right, so good morning, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. We're going to start seated today, so go ahead and find your comfortable seat, whatever that looks like. And we'll start just by rooting down and then bringing our hands to our heart and begin to cultivate some nice deep belly breaths right here. Really breathing from the center of your being. On your next exhale, release your hands down to your lap. Now on this inhale, let's begin to feel some movement. So roll your spine out nice and long, sit tall on the mat. Exhale and soften. And then inhale, lengthen, lifting, extension. Exhaling to soften. On this next exhale, draw your navel toward your spine. So we're gonna feel a little tension right in our bellies. And then inhale, roll your spine out nice and long again. Extension. Exhale, navel to spine. So let's begin to make this movement bigger. On your exhale, let your navel draw you back. So you're making a C shape with your spine. And then inhale, lengthen, lifting nice and tall. Exhaling, coiling back. Adding on from here, on that next inhale, you can shift forward and lift your breastbone. Exhaling, really scooping back. So we're feeling a little bit of that cat-cow energy as we begin to wake up the fires of our bellies. Let's add some arms on this inhale. Sweep your fingertips to the sky. Exhale as you scoop your belly in. Coil your elbows into your sides and then inhale. Roll it open. Exhaling all of that energy, all that power coming down into your core. Inhaling. Open. On this next exhale, bring both hands down to heart center. Take a moment, set your intention for your practice today. And then simply release your hands down to the mat. Walk your hands forward, sweep your feet around behind you. We can do a quick visit right here with cat-cow or free-form spinal movement. Just easing in, noticing any places that could use a little stretch, a little movement. And then as you are exploring, begin to make your way toward your first downward facing dog of class. And once you're there, keep moving. So bend one knee and then the other. Shift your shoulders, your spine. I did about five miles on the CNO Canal yesterday, so I'm going to try not to luxuriate here too much and stretching out my calves. <laughs> and then come back to your downward facing dog. Take a moment to root. Root your heels toward the mat. Melt your heart toward the earth. Inhale to look forward. And on your exhale, walk your feet to your hands, nice and slow. It's okay if you have a really deep bend in your knee here and surrender, forward fold. Try to let your head be heavy, let your neck be nice and long. If movement feels good to you in this space, feel welcome to rock from side to side, to maybe find your elbows and dangle and ragdoll. And then come to center. Release your fingertips down to the mat, bend your knees, exhale, roll your way all the way up to standing. Inhale, rise and open. Exhale, draw your hands to heart center. 
Now release your arms down. Take a moment to let this first Tadasana of class be very conscious. So root your feet. Begin to draw up on the inner arches of your feet. Engage your quads. Draw your navel toward your spine and feel your tailbone lengthen. Shoulders roll back and down, palms face forward. Inhale, rise and open. Sweep those fingertips to the sky. Exhale, pour forward. Plant your fingertips on your mat. Inhale, step your right foot back to lunge. So we're going to keep that back knee lifted. Just check in with your lunge. Make sure your left knee is directly over the ankle. We want to hug that midline. So feel your thighs drawing toward each other, even though your feet are stepping further apart. On your inhale, look forward. Exhale, scoop your belly in. That left leg will start to straighten and then inhale, come back to lunge, looking forward. Exhale, drawing in from the belly. So feel your navel moving toward your spine. Inhaling to lengthen. A couple more breaths right here, just feeling that pulse of energy. Let this inhale bring you back to lunge. Plant your hands. Press it back, downward facing dog. And again, a little movement right here. We're just warming up. So feel free to walk it out a little bit. And then come to stillness. Inhale to look forward. Exhale, roll your body all the way out to plank. Try to feel this like a nice, long, slow wave in your spine. Spread your fingers, press into your palms. We want to create space between the shoulder blades. On your next exhale, draw your navel toward your spine. Inhale, let your heart and your heels reach away from each other. And then exhale, that little coiling energy. So it's a really subtle pulse. You feel it more than see it. And if this gets to be too much, you can always lower your knees down to the mat and feel the same pattern in uh, half plank. On your next exhale, lower your knees all the way down to the mat. Shift your shoulders forward. Stay strong through your core as you float all the way down. Walk your toes back to create space. Bring your fingertips wide. They can come off the mat. Begin to roll one shoulder and then the other. So we're just creating space, finding mobility, remembering the clicking noises are normal. <laughs> Return your hands to beneath your shoulders. Press it back, downward facing dog. Bring your toes to touch at the center of the back of the mat so that you're nice and stable. Inhale to sweep that right leg to the sky. Now bend your right knee and press your heel over to the left. So we're going to start gently opening that hip. Try to stay centered through your shoulders so your shoulder girdle stays even, but press that heel. Over to the side, feeling a nice stretch in your hip. And of course, remembering not to overstretch, right? We're not stepping directly into a wild thing, we're just stretching the hip. On your next exhale, coil your right knee in, shift forward, place your right foot between your hands. Multi step movements are fine. Once again, hug that midline. So we're squeezing that center line. Thighs stay nice and active. Inhale to look forward. Exhale, scoop it in, shift back. That right leg starts to straighten. Inhale, forward to lunge. Exhaling, scooping in. Inhaling to lengthen. And just following this pulse.
Let your next inhale bring you all the way forward to lunge. Exhale, step together and soften. Let your head be heavy again. Try to create plenty of space along the back of your neck. Bend your knees. Exhale, roll your way all the way up to standing. Inhale, rise and open. Exhale, draw your hands to heart center. Notice if your Tadasana, if your mountain pose shifted, and if it did, just reroute. And then feel that energy rising back up, right? The body lifts, engaged, strong. Inhale, sweep your hands to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Plant your fingertips. Inhale to step, your left foot back to lunge. <laughs> so from here, we set up that nice strong lunge again, hugging that midline. Inhale to look forward. Exhale, scoop and shift back. This time, right toes rise. Get a deeper stretch. Inhale, forward to lunge. And exhaling, shifting back. Let your next inhale bring you all the way forward to lunge, plant your hands, press it back, downward facing dog. Again, just a little pause here to walk it out. And stabilize. Inhale to look forward. Now, nice and slowly, as though you're moving through molasses, Roll your body out to plank. Try to feel the way each individual vertebrae articulates. Inhale right here in plank. Exhale, reverse that wave, rolling back, downward facing dog. Inhale right here in down dog. Exhale, roll it up. Inhaling here and then rolling it back. So a nice smooth wave of the body. We move on the exhale, giving our belly plenty of space to work. Now on your next rollout, we're gonna follow that through Chaturanga and down to the mat. So depending on whether your knees are lifted or lowered, it's just a matter of how you're feeling today. So find your way down. And then once again, walk your toes back to create space. Let's bring fingertips wide one more time, rolling down. Return your hands to beneath your shoulders, press your toes under, press it back, downward facing dog. Bring your toes to touch at the back of the mat. Inhale to sweep that left leg to the sky. Bend your knee, press your heel over to the right. Once you're stable, check in again with your upper body. So again, the weight in the shoulders is even, or as even as we can make it, while still pressing that left hip open. And we just breathe nice and soft right here. And on this next exhale, coil your left knee in, shift forward, place your foot between your hands. Stabilize again, right? We hug that midline, we feel rooted. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, shift back. This time, left toes rise. Inhaling forward to lunge. And exhale, scooping in, shifting back, still feeling this movement originate from the belly. Let your inhale shift you forward to lunge. Exhale, step together and fold. Surrender, find movement. If that feels good, you can rock, you can turn your head from side to side, you can move your jaw. 
Come to stillness, bend your knees, exhale, roll it up. Inhale, rise and open. Exhale, hands to heart center. Reset your Tadasana. If it moved, inhale to rise. Exhale to fold. On your inhale, halfway rise. Roll your heart open, press your tailbone away, flat back. Exhale, plant your fingertips. Step or jump back to high plank. And Chaturanga. Inhale to roll your body open. And exhale, press it back. Downward facing dog. Inhale to look forward. Walk or hop your feet to your hands. Inhaling, halfway rising. Exhale to fold. Roll your way all the way up. Inhale, rise and open. Exhale, hands to heart center. One last time through our opening namaskar. Plant your feet. Inhale, rise and open. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, plant your hands. Step or jump back to high plank to chaturanga. Roll it all the way down. Inhale to open. Exhaling, pressing back, downward facing dog. Inhale to look forward. Exhale to step or hop your feet to your hands. Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, full surrender. Take a lunar pause right here. Rock from side to side, let go. Touch back in with your intention, whatever it happens to be. And then come to stillness at the center. Bend your knees, exhale, roll your way all the way up to standing. Inhale, rise and open. Exhale, hands to heart center. Release your hands down by your sides. We're going to come back down to the mat for some core cultivation. So this is the section where you'll need a block or something block shaped. So of course the yoga block is great, but you can also use a book here, anything that's fairly large and rectangular. So start rolling all the way down onto your back. Draw your knees into your chest. Let's drop from side to side, massage our lower backs on the mat. Now come to center to stillness here. We're going to take that block and we're going to balance it just above the right knee so it's in that fleshy spot on the thigh and we're going to bring that right elbow to that block as well and you're going to squeeze right so just feel that happen now when you do that you may notice that your lower back pulls off the mat so if that's happened to you it's definitely happened in my body draw your navel in and press your lower back to the mat and so just notice this first right so this needs to stay the entire time from here, lower that left hand down, let it plant to the earth. On your next exhale, point your left toe away, lengthening that leg, trying to keep your lower back on the mat. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, extending. And inhale. So that can be a 45 degree angle. It can also go lower, noticing that the lower that bottom heel goes, the more challenging it is to keep your lower back on the mat. And of course, we want to keep focusing on that. And then draw that left knee in. Set your block down, drop both knees all the way in, rock it out a little bit. And then we're going to feel that on the other side. So come to center again. Grab your block. We're going to position it just above that left knee and bring our elbow to that block or book, whatever you're using here to create the link between these two. Squeeze your knee and your elbow toward each other. And again, just notice what happened to your lower back. So draw your navel in. 
Stay engaged, plant that right hand. Exhale, reach your right foot away. Inhaling back. And exhale. And again, choosing how low that right heel goes, right? Our bodies are all in different spaces on any given day. So maybe today's a 45 degree angle day. Maybe today's a little bit more. Maybe you drop that heel and feel a little bit more core burn right here. And come back to center. Let's set that block to the sun. Rock it out a little bit, massaging your back. From here, draw your knees a little more toward your chest. Let them open out toward your armpits and press your heels to the sky. So we're finding supine crow pose here. On your exhale, press your palms between your feet. Inhale to extend to pike, reaching away. Exhaling, coiling in. Inhaling to open. And exhale to coil. On your next exhale, draw your knees into your chest. Again, rocking from side to side, maybe turning your head from side to side as well. If you lifted your shoulders off the mat, you make a little bit of neck tension. All, all right, last floor core, culti core cultivator. Lots of consonants there. Grab your block again. So this time, we're going to start with those legs extended, so reaching toward the sky. Now, I have very tight hamstrings and some injuries, which means that for me, this is straight if I'm lying on the mat. So don't feel bad if it's not a perfectly straight line, right? All our bodies are different. Take your block and bring it just above the knees. Now, we're going to balance that point with our elbows. And you can bring your hands to prayer here or interlace them or just leave them floating free, whatever feels better. Now, from here, reach that right leg away. Again, coming down to 45 degrees, maybe more. Continuing to press your lower back onto the earth. Inhaling back up. Exhale, lower that left foot down. And inhale back up. And if the block starts to slip like mine's doing right now, just reposition. This one's a little bit tough. So we squeeze and then lower that foot. All right, one more time, both sides. And come back to center, set that block to the side. I'm done torturing you this way, I promise. Rock from side to side. Now from here, rather than rocking from side to side, we'll start to rock root to crown, finding our way all the way up to standing. So you can come to seated and then stand up, or you can roll all the way up to standing and maybe stick the landing better than I did. <laughs> So let's make our way back to the top of the mat. Once again, taking a moment to root our feet. Inhale, sweep your hands to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Make your way to plank, however you'd like to get there. Step or hop back. So from plank, on your exhale, roll your way all the way back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, sweep your right leg to the sky. Exhale, roll your way back out to plank, coiling that right knee in. Inhale, up and back, extend the right leg long. Exhaling, lowering down. 
Inhale, sweep that left leg to the sky. Exhale, coil in, roll it out. Inhaling up and back. Exhale, lower that foot down. Now this time, let's look forward. Exhale to step your right foot forward between your hands and walk your hands to the broad side of the mat. And right here, we're just gonna do a little bit of hip opening. So on your exhale, sink over to one side, doesn't matter which, bend that knee, press the edge of your opposite foot away. Inhale to center and over to the other side. So just a little flowing skandasana here to keep the hips nice and open for where we're headed next. Walk your hands back to the top of your mat, pivoting on both feet to face the front of the mat. Move through your vinyasa. Once you've found yourself back and down, we're facing dog. Inhale, sweep that right leg to the sky. Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. Pivot your left foot back and down, your two foot position. Exhale, roll your way up, blossoming out to warrior two at the top. So take a moment to adjust your stance while I adjust my camera. Settle nice and deeply into that warrior. So right foot is forward, left foot is back, nice and deep. Deep sinking into the hips here. Keep your heart open to the broad side of your mat. Inhale to radiate your arms out to either side. Flip your right hand to face the sky. Inhale, sweep up and back, reverse warrior. Exhale, right hand to that knee, create space all along your left side. And then inhale up and back. Just a couple passes through your dancing warrior right here. And again, there are so many varieties of Dancing Warrior. You can choose the one you love. Come back to your Vera 2. Pinwheel your arms down and move through your Vinyasa. Once again, making your way toward your downward facing dog. So once you've found your down dog, bring your toes to touch at the back of the mat. Inhale to sweep your right leg to the sky. Now this time, exhale, coil your right knee in, roll forward, and hug that right knee toward your left armpit. Inhaling up and back. Exhale, coiling to twist. Inhale up and back. Exhale, this time we're going to coil all the way in and extend that right leg. So shift your weight into your right hand and you can pivot on that back foot, coming down to the inside of the foot. Peel your left arm open. So this is fallen triangle. One thing that makes this more challenging for the core is to begin to float that right foot off the mat. And you can find a pulse here, lowering it down and then lifting, or you can just sustain. And come back. Left hand comes back to the mat, stepping back to plank. Knees shifting down, hips shift back, child's pose. Let your knees be wide. Sink your hips toward your heels. Melt your way down to the earth and just come back to your breath, back to your intention here.
walk your hands back. Find your way to your downward facing dog. Once you've landed in your downward dog, inhale to sweep your left leg to the sky. Exhale, step that left foot forward between your hands. Pivot your right foot back and down. Blossom, find your way up, opening out to your Vera two. Once again, take a moment, get settled. Sink into your left knee, let your hips open toward the earth. Turn your heart to face the broad side of the mat, radiate your arms. Flip your left hand to face the sky. Let's find Dancing Warrior up and back. Exhale. Left hand or left elbow to left knee, right arm reaches long. Inhaling up and back. And again, just loving this fluid connection right here. Find your way back to your Vira two. Pinwheel your hands down to the mat and move through your vinyasa. Stabilize your downward facing dog. On your next inhale, sweep that left leg to the sky. Exhale, coil in. Rolling forward, hug that left knee toward your right armpit. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, coiling, hug to twist. Inhaling, up and back. On this next exhale, let's extend that left leg. So again, shift your weight, bringing that over into the left hand. Maybe we pivot onto the edge of that right foot. Inhale, peeling your left arm open. Exhaling, lowering down. Inhale to peel, sustain. So again, we find ourselves in fallen triangle and maybe you lift that left foot, putting it down or sustaining. Just a little pulse right here. And come back, lower that hand down, knees to the mat, toes touch, let them open out and sink your hips to your heels. Child's pose, breathe. Come back to center, back to your intention. Walk your hands back and just come to the kneeling. Now, one of the important things to remember in yoga is that our core strength includes flexibility. So although our culture prizes that like super cut abdomen that we see in movies and magazines, when you look at muscles that are that heavily ridged that you're looking at when a body is at relaxation, it means that they're very tight. And that means that that body, if it suddenly did like, say, a transverse movement of some sort, it could really hurt itself. Muscles that are tight, tear. So our next little sequence is going to be just about cultivating some flexibility as well as strength in the core. So I'd like you to come all the way down to your belly. Come flat down onto the mat. Hopefully yours has less dog hair on it than mine does. Walk your toes back and create space. Now we're going to start by creating length. So point your toes away, try to teach, reach the back wall of the room. And then relax. Roll your shoulders back and down and float your fingertips. And then relax. Now, 
draw your awareness to where your belly is resting on the mat and draw your navel up off the mat. It's not a huge contraction, just a little bit of movement. You want to feel as though you could slide a penny underneath your belly button. So we keep that and then add on. Roll your shoulders back and down. Float the fingertips. Reach your toes long. Inhale, sweep up and back. Shalabhasana, locust pose. Exhale to soften a little bit. And then inhale. Exhale. So yogi's choice one is we pulse right here. So just working on stretching while strengthening. Option two is we begin to swim. On your inhale, sweep your fingertips forward, toes reach wide. Exhale, hands sweep back, toes together. Inhaling, extension. Exhaling back. How's your navel? Are you still pulling up? And come back, lower your hands, your feet. Make a pillow with your hands, rest your head. Rock your hips from side to side. It would feel good. You could add in your feet and your legs for some windshield wiper legs. That feels nice in my body, but as a, with all things yoga, your mileage will vary. All right, one more little piece of core work that also does some flexibility while we're down here. Release your feet back down to the earth. Bend your right knee and reach your right hand back to find that foot. So once you've got that foot, draw up on your navel. Reach your left arm forward. So remembering the pulse from last time, the navel stays drawing in, our bellies are engaged. Inhale, float it up, half locus. Exhaling, softening a little bit, but not all the way down. Inhale to float. And exhale. And let's switch it out, lowering down. Make that pillow with your hands, rest your head, rock your hips. And we'll feel it on the other side. Come to stillness. Bend your left knee, reach your left hand back, find that foot. Reach your right arm forward. Draw up on your navel. So again, creating that little space for that penny underneath the mat. Inhale, half locust pose. Exhaling to soften. Inhale to extend. And release. Come all the way down. Rest your head and rock your hips. Bending your knees and adding your feet to that would feel good. And then find your way back. So just pressing back to seated. So we're going to end the uh, well, let's call it the active portion of our vinyasa class today, with a little playtime in crow pose, simply because that does so much in terms of keeping our core nice and strong. So let's talk through Vipassana. So you're going to want to find your way up to your low perch first. So for me, the way that looks is my toes are touching, heels are separate, and then I lower my way down, heels come off the mat. So stabilize here. And I always like to teach the pulse first. So walk your hands as far forward as you can reach. Hook your fingertips. On your exhale, scoop your navel in. Feel the way your thighs continue to touch your belly as you get just so much height from the hips. And then soften back down to the earth. So let's feel that one more time. Coiling in, shifting up and back. And coming back down. So let's do a little playtime in arm balance land, right? So 
in Bakasana, ideally, you want your knees to be almost in your armpits. So rather than having them balanced right above the elbow, we really want to feel that tuck nice and strong. So I always like to start by prepping my knees into my armpits. Plant your hands, spread your fingers. Exhale, scoop your belly in. Begin to shift forward. Now we want to keep the hips nice and high here. Shift your weight, your balance, and maybe those feet begin to float off the mat. Find your way back down. Decide if you'd like to try another round. You're welcome to do so. Once again, placing your knees. Lift your hips. You can also start lifted and then shift forward. Sometimes that's better than looking at the earth. So that you think of this as a crow that's flying rather than crashing down. <laughs> And then when you're all done playing, find your way back down to the mat. And no pressure. You can have a little bit of playtime right here. Once you do, find your way back down. Take a moment to counterpose your wrists. So my favorite counterpose is to turn my palms to face me and begin to rock a little bit of weight into my wrists. Other options for you, you can shake out your hands. Some people like to step on their feet, or on their hands rather, and kind of massage their wrist joint with their toes. In my body, that feels awful. <laughs> but if it feels good in yours, please feel welcome to go there. Now we've done a lot of core work today, so I wanna make sure we address our backs. Find your way back up to seated. Let's sweep our feet forward and draw that left heel in toward your body. Place your right foot out in front of you. Then bring that right foot to the outside of your left knee. So we're going to set up for a nice deep twist. When we do a lot of core and back work, twisting is a wonderful way to counterpose that out. Sweep your right hand down to the mat at the base of your spine. Plant your hand. Roll your shoulder back and down. Inhale. Reach your left arm to the sky. Now as we move into the twist, lift up. So we go extension first and then over into the twist. Elbow to knee, turn your heart toward the back of the room. Every inhale, feel light. Every exhale, just surrender into that twist a little bit more. And come back to center. Sweep your hands over to the left. Plant your fingertips. Curve your spine. Find your way all the way up. We're going to bring that right foot back to center and extend it out. So we're going to nestle that left foot to the inner thigh. Turn your heart toward your right foot. Inhale to create plenty of length first. Exhale, fold forward. As always, wherever your hands land is fine. What we want to do is get some length into the lower back right here. So on your inhale, I want you to roll your spine out nice and long. Think about your heart shining toward your toes. Exhale, soften toward your right leg. Inhaling again, feeling that wave starting from the lower back, making the spine nice and straight. Exhaling to soften. Once more right here. So we're going to do one of my favorite stretches for the lower side of the back. But I want you to be aware while we do this, we haven't had a twisting practice today, right? We've had a core practice. So when we do the rotation here, I want you to only move to the point where you feel a little bit of resistance. We want to get a nice stretch rather than hurt ourselves. Bring your right hand to the inside of that left leg. Plant your left hand, so maybe that's to the toes or the leg, and just begin to turn like you're going to tuck your heart and your head underneath that left arm. 
Now, in my body, I start feeling this almost immediately in the lower back on my left side. And again, we want to stretch rather than injure. So we don't move to full rotation. We just stretch it out, root that left hip, get a nice deep opening right here. And then we're going to come back to center and feel that the other way. So you're going to take your left hand to your shin, right hand comes to the toe. Begin to draw your left shoulder down as you peek under your right arm. And again, not going for maximum stretch, maximum movement here, just to the point where it feels good, where you feel that release, this time on that lower right part of your back. And come back to stillness, roll your way up, let's switch it out. So we're going to draw that right foot in, left foot comes out in front, seated twist first. So we bring that left foot to the outside of the right knee, settle, sweep your left hand down to the mat, plant that hand and roll your shoulder back and down, press into your palm. Inhale, reach your right hand to the sky, reach up and up as you're turning, come down. So we begin to sink into the twist first. Inhale, create length. Exhale, turn your heart toward the back of the room. and release. Sweep your hands over to the right. Plant your fingertips, curve your spine. And let's come back to center. So we're going to take that left foot and extend that left leg nice and long. Nestle your right foot into your inner thigh. We'll start just with the stretch. Turn your heart toward your left foot. Create plenty of space. And then exhale, fold forward. Fingertips come down wherever they land is fine. Let's create space first. So again, we're going to concentrate on lengthening that spine. So inhale, roll your spine out nice and long. The heart and the toes reach toward each other. Exhale to soften into the space you've created. And let's feel that again, lengthening and then softening. So this time we'll start stretching out the lower back with that twist. Again, remembering not to go to our fullest extension of this twist. Take your right hand, bring it to the inside. Sorry, left hand and bring it to the inside of the left leg. Right hand plant, so right fingertips, find the toes or your shin. Begin to turn your heart to gaze underneath that right arm. Continue to sink into your hips. If you notice that your right hip is starting to pull off the mat, just shift your weight, pressing down. Really enjoying that stretch along the side and the back. And again, going part way here so we don't go to our fullest extension. And let's come back to center. We're going to switch that out. So that right hand is going to come to the shin. Left fingertips find the foot or the ankle. And we'll begin to turn. So we're going to draw that right shoulder down, turning to gaze under the left arm. Again, root your hips. So this time that left hip is going to need to stay grounded. Turning to gaze and not moving to fullest extension, just to that beautiful stretch place where you kind of internally go, oh, yeah. <laughs> you might stay here for like half an hour. Come back to center. Draw your toes together. Let's Konasana, butterfly pose. Now we have been in our hips today, so you can go nice and deep with this one. So draw your heels toward your body. Create plenty of space. Get long. 
On your exhale, hinge forward from your hips. So we want to stay nice and long the whole way down. Back stays flat. Now, once you reach your point of maximum stretch, like this is it for me this morning, then let your spine curve. If you'd like to, you're welcome to bring your elbows to your shins or your calves or your thighs and press down gently to roll open. Maybe if those are open, you open your feet like a book. Just bowing over this space, nice deep opening in the belly, in the hips. And we'll find our way back to center. Roll your way all the way down onto your back. Draw your knees in and rock from side to side. Massage your back on the earth. Come to stillness at the center. Open your arms out to either side. Drop your knees off to that right hand side. As always, feel welcome to reach down and find your left foot to get a nice deep stretch. If you choose that option, make sure you're still dropping that left hip toward the bottom of your mat. Try to relax. Let the earth hold you. And come back to center. We're going to feel that on the other side. Drop your knees off to the left. Again, option to extend that right leg. Remember to keep dropping that right hip toward the bottom of the mat. Turn to gaze to the right. And again, just soften. Let the earth hold you. And come back to center. Now, if there is any additional movement, any stretch, any asana, anything at all that you would like to feel before we close for the day, whether that's an inversion or another hip opener or a twist, take this time to create whatever that feeling happens to be, to honor whatever it is your body is asking for right now. And then whenever you are all done playing, begin to make your way toward your Shavasana. Remembering, of course, that there are always options. So you can lie flat on the mat. You can soften and let your palms face the sky. If you find that this causes discomfort in your lower back, bend your knees. Plant your feet the distance of the mat and let your knees drop together at the center so that your body is supported. You're also welcome to take seated meditation, to lie on your side, whatever feels best in your body this morning. What's most important is that we find a space to integrate all the benefits of this practice. So I invite you right now to just soften. Let your body relax. Become aware of all of the little points of connection where your body is in touch with the floor. And let those points become a little more indistinct. Let them melt. Relax your jaw. Relax your eyes and your forehead. Draw your awareness into your breath. And if you find 
that you get drawn into a thought cycle. Simply come back to this, to your breath moving in your body. And then simply let go and flow. Allow your breath to create space within your body. Begin to find some little movements of your fingertips and your toes, just bringing you back to this day, to this time. Point your toes away, reach your arms up overhead, take a nice deep breath in, full body stretch. Then exhale to draw your knees into your chest, rock from side to side, and eventually find your way all the way over onto your right side. Soften right here. Come back to your intention one more time. Think about the ways you're going to carry that intention off of your mat and out into this life. And then use your hands to help press yourself up to a nice, easy seated position. Bring your hands to heart center and close your eyes. So we're at the start of another month. So I'm going to do three rounds of the Ganesha mantra, which is the remover of obstacles, and then close on an ohm. If you know the Ganesha mantra, you can join in. Otherwise, feel free to just join in the ohm at the end. Inhale. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me this morning. Namaste. Thank you, my friends. Let me come stop this recording.